Well, welcome back everyone. Uh, today, just for a change of pace, I'm going to jump back and have a look at some valve gear. I've got a Chrysler 1160 radio that has come into my possession from my mother, and I believe it doesn't work. I haven't actually tried it yet, but I downloaded the schematic last night and took a quick look at it, and there's a couple of interesting things in there. So I thought I'd just run through the schematic and I'm hoping through the week I'll be able to actually start looking at it in earnest. Anyway, let's take a look at the schematic now. Okay, so let's take a look at this circuit diagram now. Okay, a standard sort of power supply here, 240 volts in here. We've got a dual rectifier here, and that is generating our HT on here. And that's fed up to the anode of our output stage. And via uh, these two resistors here, we're generating a secondary HT, which, as well as being fed to the screen grid, is fed through to feed the rest of the anodes as well. One little thing I would mention in the power supply, a little bit of trickery going on here. If we look at the negative side of our HT supply here, it actually gets returned to the ground through R9. And if you look at the output tube, you'll notice there's no cathode bias on there. Negative grid bias is actually being achieved by this R9. So let's just, rather than try and explain that in this circuit, let's take a look at a simplified circuit as to how that's actually working. Okay, so just to explain this a little bit, let's consider we have a battery here. Um, let's put a resistor in here, call that ground. Here we have some sort of load, and that goes back to ground as well. So here's our positive and our ground here. So as we get current flowing, and we'll look at this from a conventional current point of view, through the circuit that way. We'll see a positive, negative, positive, negative develop across the load. So if we now measure right here with respect to here, you'll see that it's a negative voltage. And that's how they're using this little trick in the power supply to generate the negative bias on the output valve. Okay, well let's get back to the circuit. Okay, so now let's take a look at the signal path through this particular radio. The antenna here, uh, we've got a tune transformer here, and that signal's being applied to the grid of our mixer. This half of the tuning capacitor is tuning this front end to be selective at the frequency that we're wanting to receive. If we look over here, we've got our oscillator tuned circuit and you can see that the two capacitors here are ganged. So this is tuning 455 above where we want to receive. The 6AN7, if I just call that up, is a hexode triode uh, frequency converter and what you'll find is the triode is being used for the local oscillator and the hexode component is being used as the mixer so uh, the control grid of the hexode has our received signal from the antenna and the control grid of the triode is actually internally connected to one of the grids in the hexode and the hexode component is being operated in a non-linear version so at the anode we actually have the original local oscillator signal 
the received signal and also the sum and difference signals. And the one we're interested in in this case is 455. So what we do is we tune this transformer for 455 to selectively grab that intermediate frequency signal from the mixer. If we follow that through, that signal is going to the grid of this 6AD8. If we call up the 6AD8, so it's a double diode pentode, normally used for RF and AF. So let's take a look at how it's being used in this instance. Intermediate frequency is being brought into that control grid and that will amplify the IF frequency. So at the anode, we will have the IF frequency and that's brought down to another tuned transformer. And again, this one's tuned to 455. At the output of that transformer, again, we've got the 455 signal. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. So the output of that transformer actually comes back onto those diodes in that valve. So that actually rectifies that signal. So down here, if we follow this path, this is actually the volume control here. So across that volume control, we're actually going to have the detected signal. Normally that would be fed through the volume control to another preamplifier, but they're using a little bit of trickery here. And if we follow the wiper of that volume control, what we find is it actually gets fed back to the control grid of the 6AD8. So the 6AD8 is actually being used for two purposes. It's being used to amplify the IF signal, but it's also being used as a preamplifier for the audio signal. So if we look on the plate here, and again follow this down through the IF transformer winding and down to this point and then we look across here through that capacitor we actually find the audio signal being applied to the control grid of the output valve. That audio signal is amplified in the power valve and the signal is uh, applied to the loudspeaker via the transformer. Now one thing, other thing I should mention, if we look at the secondary side of the output transformer, we've got a signal flowing back through R7 uh, back to this point here. So this is actually providing some negative feedback just to stabilize that whole amplifier stage. If we didn't have that or the transformer phasing was the other way, it would cause uh, positive feedback and it would be pretty horrible. And there's actually a special note here about correct phasing of the speaker transformer secondary being essential just for that very reason. One other thing that I should cover off on is if we come back here and take a look at our rectified uh, signal, IF signal, if we follow through here, you'll see all the way back to this control grid, this is the AGC signal, and it's also applied to the control grid of the 6AD8 via R3. This is a very ingenious circuit. It relies on careful selection of components to create high and low pass filters so that the signals go where they need to go. Effectively a low pass filter created with this capacitor here to make sure the audio goes through here and again effectively low pass. And we've got some high pass filtering here to make sure that the actual IF signal comes down to earth here and not through the audio path. So look, a very ingenious design and it obviously turned what would have been a five valve receiver into a four valve receiver and saved quite a bit of cost in the manufacture. So there we go. As I say, I just received this. I don't believe it works. Just grabbed the circuit, saw there was a couple of little things in there that may be of interest and wanted to get this video out. So I'll be investigating what's actually wrong, if anything, with this radio and looking at getting it operational. Okay, cheers for now. If you like what I'm doing, then please do like the video. If you'd like to see more, then 
please subscribe and don't forget to hit the chime so you get notified when I post something new. And I'll put a couple of links here to some other videos you can look at.